Hi, and welcome to this latest immigration law update video. In this short video, I just wanted to summarize the recent decision of the Court of Appeal in KB Jamaica, that's 2020 EWCA Civ 1385 from the 28th of October 2020. While this decision doesn't lay down any new law, it's an example of a trend we're seeing from the Court of Appeal in relation to deportation decisions. So we've had the landmark decision, the comprehensive decision of HA Iraq. Emma and Stephen have discussed that in another video, which I'll link below this video. And that looked at the unduly harsh test, very compelling circumstances, best interests of children, rehabilitation. Then recently I did a video on the other case from the Court of Appeal, AA Nigeria, where Lord Justice Popperwell restored the decision of the first tier tribunal allowing a deportation appeal, found that there wasn't an error of law uh, and gave guidance on unduly harsh and uh, errors of law. And again, we're seeing Lord Justice Popperwell again in KB Jamaica restoring a la an allowed appeal and finding that the first tier tribunal decision on unduly harsh was fine and there was no error of law by, uh, by the first tier and the upper tribunal shouldn't have interfered with it. It's on your screen, so have a look at it. 38 year old Jamaican citizen, four children who he had a subsisting relationship with, paragraph two, and played a significant role in their day-to-day -day life. The deportation were in, was in relation to some convictions between 2007 and 2013. He had nine convictions. The key ones which triggered the deportation were from 2014 in relation to an ABH and doing an act intending to pervert the course of justice. And he got 12 months and six months consecutive uh, on that occasion. First tier tribunal judge Guran Thapa allowed his appeal. Permission was granted to the Secretary of State and upper tribunal judge Finch in January 2019 found an error of law and that there then should be a fresh uh, appeal. That fresh hearing came before upper tribunal judge Norton Taylor and he dismissed the appeal. Now, Lord Justice Popwell summarizes the law and paragraph 15 is actually really helpful because it's a great potted summary of KO, KO Nigeria and HA Iraq as to the meaning of unduly harsh. So when you're drafting your representations, your skeleton arguments, uh, this is a useful potted summary. So let me read it to you. One, the unduly harsh test is, is to be determined without reference to the criminality of the parent or the severity of the relevant offences. That's KO paragraph 23, reversing what was said by the Court of Appeal in MM Uganda that criminality was relevant. Two, unduly harsh requires a degree of harshness which goes beyond what, was ne what would necessarily be involved for any child faced with deportation of a parent. Three, this is an elevated test which carries a much stronger emphasis than mere undesirability or what is merely uncomfortable, inconvenient or difficult. But the threshold is not as high as very com the very compelling circumstances test in 117C6, and that's paragraphs 27 of KO and 51 to 52 of HA. Paragraph four is very important. The formulation in paragraph 23 of KO Nigeria does not posit some objectively measurable standard of harshness which is acceptable, and it is potentially misleading and dangerous to seek to identify some ordinary level of harshness as an acceptable level by reference to what may be commonly encountered circumstances. There is no reason in principle why cases of undue harshness may not occur, occur quite commonly and how a child will be affected by a parent's deportation will depend on an, upon an almost infinitely variable range of circumstances. It is not possible to identify a base level of ordinariness. And he cites paragraphs from HA Iraq and AA Nigeria. Beyond this guidance, further exposition of the phrase will really be helpful and tribunals will not err in law if they carefully evaluate the effect of the parent's deportation on the child and then decide whether the effect is not merely harsh but unduly harsh applying the above guidance and there is no substitute for the statutory wording. So then he looks at the issues on, on appeal and the challenge was to the error of law decision and that the 
was no error of law in the decision of the FTT. And again, we see Lord Justice Popperwell repeating the observations of Lord Justice Floyd in, in UT Sri Lanka. And this whole point being made that simply because a tribunal may have reached a different conclusion or expressed themselves differently does not constitute an error of law. Because we've seen this trend, particularly in deportation cases, where you get the sense that the upper tribunal would have reached a different conclusion and they find an error of law. And the Court of Appeal is saying, well, actually, there's no error of law here. So Lord Justice Popwell looks at what reasons were given for the finding of the error of law. Uh, and upper tribunal Judge Finch had found that the judge had wrongly taken account of MM Uganda. Well, that was the correct law at the time in relation to the appellant's criminality being part of the unduly harsh assessment and that she hadn't applied the proper test of undue harshness. So Zain Malik on behalf of the Secretary of State summarises the error of law under a three heads. Firstly that the judge had wrongly taken into account the criminality of the appellant. Secondly that the judge had not applied the correct test as to what was unduly harsh. And thirdly, that the evidence before the FTT judge was arguably insufficient to meet the correct test of undue harshness. And what we're going to see now is points one and three fall away. So look at paragraph 20. Sonali Naik, on behalf of the appellant, argued, well, hang about, the judge taking into account the criminality was a point that played against the appellant. So if the judge found it was unduly harsh, even taking into account the criminality. If you take away the criminality, that just strengthens the appellant's case. And that was accepted. And so that basis for the error of law finding could not stand. What about point three? The evidence before the FTT judge was arguably insufficient to meet the correct test of undue harshness. Well, Miss Naik argued there, paragraph 21, that that's wrong because the Upper tribunal must decide whether in fact there was an error of law or not. And Mr. Malik accepted that mere, merely arguable insufficiency of evidence was not enough to establish an error of law. So point three could not stand. And actually, he went on to concede that actually different judges could reach different conclusions on the evidence that was available in this case. So that left only point two. Did the FTT judge correctly identify and apply the correct test in relation to undue harshness? Uh, and Mr. Malik summarized the challenge under three heads, which the Court of Appeal say actually goes beyond the grounds of challenge, that she didn't recognize the elevated threshold. Secondly, she didn't give adequate reasons. And thirdly, she took into account irrelevant matters. In relation to the failure to apply the correct test, uh, they reject that and say she did apply the elevated threshold. And look at paragraph 25, because this might be helpful to you in other cases. The judge set out the statutory test and said in terms that the crux of the case was whether the consequences for the children would be unduly harsh. A failure to refer expressly to any further exposition of that test cannot of itself amount to an error of law. As this court said in AA Nigeria at paragraph nine, the presumption is that the correct test has been applied unless it appears from something in the judgment that that is not so. And they give examples then of what she cited to show she applied the elevated threshold. What about inadequate reasons? Well, that wasn't really advanced with any strength and they quickly reject that challenge. In terms of taking into account irrelevant matters. They, certain points were made by the Secretary of State of allegedly irrelevant matters she took into account. And they then look at where she, well, well the, the, the fact that they were not irrelevant and they were material considerations to the unduly harsh test. And any error she made in relation to the proportionality balance wasn't relevant paragraph 35, because she'd already found the, the, the decision was unduly harsh, and that was a sustainable finding. So the Court of Appeal restore the allowed appeal by the first-year tribunal. So this case is helpful 
in resisting challenges to allowed appeals in deportation cases and this emphasis again that mere disagreement does not amount to an error of law the fact you'd have reached a different decision does not amount to an error of law and there's that helpful summary potted summary of what the unduly harsh test involves so another helpful case and it's interesting to see the trend of decisions we're getting from the court of appeal in deportation cases I'll link the other relevant videos that's on, that are on this channel in relation to the recent deportation cases below this video, but I hope that's helpful to you. Uh, thanks a lot.